All right, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on some upper body mobility, working towards or working on your back bend or your bridge. Um, so we're going to start off with a little bit of rehab, a little bit of stretching through your rotator cuff, uh, and then slowly progress to some bridge work. Um, equipment that you're going to need, uh, one of these, so any sort of ball thing, you can use tennis ball, uh, even a couple of back balls. If you don't have any of that, you can use a foam roller, which you're going to need as well. Um, you're going to want to have a mat, uh, a band. This is optional though, so if you have one of these around the house, you can grab one of those. Uh, and I'm going to be using a plyo box, but you are more than welcome to use either a sturdy table or a chair as well will do the trick. Uh, and then having some sort of heavy object that you can hold on to. Um, but we are going to start by using one of these, uh, and we're going to roll out through here to start with, just to get our shoulders moving that way a little bit better. Um, so you're going to be lying on your mat or your rug, whatever's comfortable, and you want to place the ball around about here. It might be different for everyone. You can also go up through the arm there will work. But for 30 seconds, we are literally just going to roll up and down. It may feel a little bit gnarly to start with. And of course, if you don't have a ball, you can use your foam roller as well and do the same thing. I personally don't find it as effective, but if you feel like having the ball is too much, you can go to the foam roller. Um, so you're just rolling around trying to find that nasty little painful spot. Uh, you will definitely feel it when you find it. You can also move around. So you don't have to be static in one position. You can just roll up and down through the arm. We are going to be here for 30 seconds. So finding a spot. If it's too much on the ground, you can also do this against a wall as well. Makes it a little bit nicer. So we'll do a little bit longer. And then we'll change sides. Dex is very sleepy this morning again. Be sleepy. All right, let's go to the other arm. So same thing, placing it roughly around here. Trying to find that spot. It might be worse, it might be better on this side. And this is definitely something you can do every other day, just when your shoulders are feeling a little bit bunged up. Again, moving around. <laughs> Dex, you can say hi to Kaz. <laughs> All right, a little bit longer on this side. Okay. We're going to go back to the first side. We're going to do some internal rotation stretches. So I'm going to have my arm out in front of me, but I'm making sure that I'm drawing it into the shoulder and I'm nice and stacked. My shoulder is away from my ear. Feel free to grab a block or a pillow or something to prop your head on. Uh, and then I'm going to bend that arm. So I've got a 90 degree angle. I'm going to grab the wrists trying to keep that shoulder pulled back, I'm going to press my wrist down to the floor. So you're making sure that your elbow is in line with your shoulder. So I'm going to hold it here and then I'm going to release. I'm going to do 10 of these. So this is one, two, three. So it might not feel like a traditional stretch, a little bit rough. Four, try and get it a bit deeper each time. Five. Six. Seven. 
eight, nine, and last one, 10. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other arm. So again, pull the shoulder into the shoulder blade, grab the wrist and pushing down one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. All right, shake the arms up. Uh, we're just going to do one set of those. Uh, and we're going to move on. So you are going to want to grab your foam roller and we'll start with this one. So we're going to warm up our thoracic extension uh, along with our hip flexors. So with the foam roller, you're going to place it on the ground. You're going to lie back and you want to put it around mid back, but it really depends on where you are feeling at your tightest. Uh, knees can be bent, they can be straight. I'm gonna straighten my knees, but you make sure that your tailbone is tucked under. Okay, so we are not arching through our lower back. You're gonna place your hands behind your ears, and then you're going to try to extend back as far as you can go without letting your lower back go, and then you're gonna come back in front, okay? You've just got a view of Texas' tail. And again, going back. So squeezing the shoulder blades together and hollow chest. Three. Holding and back. Four. And back away low. Five. <laughs> you don't eat the mic. <laughs> Six. Got the mic. He may have nearly got the mic. I think we're okay though. And back. Yeah, we're okay. Seven. And back. Eight. And back. Two more. Nine. And back one more time, 10. Again, tailbone tucked under. And coming back, okay. Uh, we're going to go into some lunges. So for this one, we're gonna start with our knee on the ground. I want your bum tucked, and you're gonna to try to sink as far forward as you can. I'm sitting on my foot, thank you. Chest up nice and tall. And then you're gonna imagine that someone is sitting on your butt so you're not allowed to lift your hips up. And then you're gonna have your toes on the ground and you're gonna try and straighten that back knee without lifting your hips. You're gonna hold and then you're gonna bend and you're gonna try and sink a little bit deeper, okay? So we're gonna do 10 of those. If you feel a little bit wobbly, feel free to have something to hold on to to stabilize, okay. So chest up and one, straighten and bend. And two and bend, three and bend, four and bend, try and sink, five. And bend, six. And bend, three more to go, seven. And bend, eight. There's four more to go. And bend, two more, nine. And last one, 10. And bend, okay. You're gonna bring that back knee forward. It's gonna come into your chest for a counter stretch and then we're going to do the other side. So again, going as wide as you can go. 
sinking the hips forward, tailbone is tucked under as best as you can, toes are on the ground, and straightening one, and bend, two, and bend, three, bend, four, bend, five, bend, six, bend, seven, bend, eight, bend, nine, bend, and last one, 10, and bend. Okay, again, bring that back knee into your chest. Oh dear, oh dear. A bit of a counter stretch. There's no. Shush. An amazing guard dog. Okay, uh, we're going to do that one more time. Go see who it is, Index. Go see. Go on. Go on then. Okay. So with the foam roller again, again, placing it where you feel like you need it. So for me, it's around about there. Straight or bent knees, hands behind the ears, tailbone tucked under, and arching back one. And back to a hollow. And two. And hollow. Three, and hollow, four, and hollow, try and go a bit further each time, five, and hollow, six, uh, making sure we're still not arching through the lower back and keeping the chin to our chest as well because we don't want to be craning our necks. Seven. So squeeze the shoulder blades together and back. Eight. And back two more to go. Nine. Try and open the elbows up to the floor as well. And back one more time, 10. Okay, and coming back. We're gonna do one more set of our lunges before we move on. So I'll pick your bad leg first, whichever your bad leg is. Uh, tailbone tucked as best as you can, chest up nice and tall. If you feel like your stance is quite long and your chest is coming forward, if you make it a bit shorter, you'll find it a lot easier to keep your chest up. Did you catch the bad mandex? So strong and brave. All right, ready. And straighten, one. And bend. Try and sink, two. And bend, three and bend, four, and bend, five, and bend, six, and bend, seven, and bend, eight, and bend, nine, and bend, last one, 10, and bend, okay. Back knee comes forward to your chest before we do the other side. All right, and sinking forward on the other leg. Go as long or as short as you need to with your stance. Make sure that chest is up nice and tall and bend the knee, one. Sorry, straighten the knee 
and now bend. Two, and bend. Three, and bend. Four, and bend. Five, and bend. Six, and bend. Seven, and bend. Eight, and bend. Looks like I'm not actually straightening. And last one, 10, and bend. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna work on a lat tri stretch. So for that one, you wanna grab your box. You can also do it on the chair uh, or even the couch will work. Anything that's kind of this height will do you good. Um, weight is optional for this one. You can also use a band or a stick. Weight is going to be harder uh, than using the other two, but it is going to be an active stretch. So for 45 seconds, going to bring the box over. Excuse me, Dexter. Going to have to move. Or not. <laughs> okay. So, probably what about this height? And I would definitely put a mat on top as well. All right, if we are using a stick, do I have a stick? No, I don't. So if you're using one of these, you're gonna grab it with your palms facing up. The wider your hands are, the closer your elbows are, the more of a stretch we're gonna have, okay? So we wanna get that as best as we can. Your elbows are going to sit on the edge of the box or the chair or the sofa, whatever you're using, you're going to duck your head down between your arms, like so. You're going to push your chest down and pull your fists as close to your shoulders as you can. So with my rib cage in, so I'm not just relaxing into it, trying to hollow, but I'm trying to push my armpit to the ground, okay? So all of that in place, I'm then gonna walk my knees back as far as I can hold, because we're gonna be holding in as much of a plank as you can for 45 seconds, okay? Same rules apply with a band. If you obviously don't have a stick, you can use a broom or anything that resembles that. With a weight, you're essentially gonna be doing the same thing except it's gonna be pushing my wrists to my shoulders, like that, okay? It's the same thing, but you've also got a little bit of weight pushing your shoulders down to the ground. So it's a stronger stretch. Obviously, the heavier you go, the harder it's going to be. So, Gary's gonna put a timer on for 45 seconds with words of encouragement. And um, we're gonna hold that, and then we're gonna work on some rotation afterwards, okay? So setting up your station, picking whatever device you wanna hold on to, and then we're gonna do it for 45 seconds. So again, it's an active stretch. Uh, you should be exerting yourself trying to hold this. Make sure you're not flopping into it. We want a rounded back, okay? So into position. And your time will start now. Okay. So again, hollow chest, my bum is tucked under. Make sure your abs are engaged. Doing good, almost there. <laughs> I was wondering where the words of encouragement were. 
ever. I feel like anything that I say makes you laugh and, <laughs> and maybe it makes everyone laugh. Just makes it that more enjoyable. Makes it more difficult. Three, two, one. Oh, so if you yeah. laugh, you're not... <laughs> sort of like losing concentration. It's distraction. That's a key stretching tool. Distraction. Alrighty. The second one you're going to work on is your scorpion. So I'm just going to move this to the side. Dropping the weight on the floor. So you just want a bit of room because we're going to be lying on our stomach. So from here, Hands are going to go out to the side. Now you're trying to get your opposite foot to your opposite hand. So I'm going to start by bending my left knee. Now our hips are nice and warm from the previous two exercises, so this should be a Then if you're going to squeeze your butt to lift that foot as high as you can to the ceiling. So you've got max hip extension. You're going to keep lifting it. Come all the way over. And we're gonna try and touch that hand as best as you can. You may not get there. You may just be able to get it to the floor, which is okay, but make sure you're trying to reach the foot. I'm also thinking about keeping my left shoulder as close to the ground as possible. And then I come back, I'm lifting it up, and then I'm coming back down. So I want you to avoid just bringing the knee down. The whole time I'm reaching this foot up to the ceiling. Okay, we're going to do five on each side. So lifting the foot up, coming over, holding. Pat your dog lifting. at the same time. <laughs> and two. And back. And three. And back, four, and back, one more time, five, and back, okay, other side, and one, And two. Three. And four. All right, and last one, five. And coming back, okay. That was set one. We're gonna do two more, uh, going back to our lat try insertion. So this one, hopefully you are feeling a stretch down through there. The more you can draw the chest in and push your armpits to the ground, the more you're going to feel it. So try not to just flop into it, okay? All right, 45 seconds again. Ducking the head through, hands on the shoulders, and time starts and now. Go. I feel like we're going to keep getting cold mornings. <laughs> like, I it's like over. summer. It's over. But so over it. Which is kind of nice. I don't mind like the sort of crisp cold mornings. All right, almost there. My morning chat really got you through this, distracting. Uh, oh, my knees are slipping. Oh, no, you, uh, three, uh, two, failure. one. Do not wear baggy trousers on this floor. 
It gets very cold in here though. It does. During, yeah, it does. during winter. I'm like in f like five layers when I come in. Yeah, that is good. It kind of makes you want to warm up and <laughs> yeah. exercise. Okay, back on the ground, going into our scorpion again. So bending the knee, lifting it up, and taking it over one. If you want to go a little bit further, bend the knee a bit more, try and get your foot to your elbow rather than your hand. And back. Two. And back. Three. Four. And one more time. Five. And coming back, we're going to do the other leg. Bend the knee, lift it up, and one. Two. Three. Four. And last one, five. Try and keep that other shoulder down. And back over. Okay, we have one more set. So again, back to your lat try. <laughs> Gary's slacking. <laughs> Oh, he's getting a banana. I wish I was just eating food. It's hard work pressing buttons. Okay. Coming down and time starts now. Cool. And which way do you open a banana? <laughs> the correct way. Well, actually the monkey is open it. The monkeys open it from, from oh, the really? bottom, not the top. Is it easier? It is, yeah. Why do we open it from the other way then? I don't know. It looks easier, or it just like it looks like the top, and we just want to open the top. So all you have to do is kind of like pinch the bottom, and then it kind of splits open. That's so smart. All right. Three, two, one. Okay. All right, one more set of rotation. So again, lying on your stomach. I'm also trying to not use my opposite leg. So if I'm reaching with my left, my right leg is completely dead weight. So I'm not pushing on the ground to get further. In an ideal situation anyway. Okay, lifting, Come over, and back, two, should get a little bit better each time we do this, three, four, And last one, five. All right, other side. And one. Two. Three. Four. And one more time. Five. Okay. 
Uh, while I'll explain the next couple of exercises, you can do a little bit of a counter stretch. So once you've done any sort of extension work, you want to try and do a little bit of the opposite, which is forward flexion. So any sort of forward folding variation just to stretch you back out the other way, just makes your lower back feel a little bit nicer after doing all that. Um, but we are going to get into our main work. So we're going to pair a back bend variation. There are a few variations depending on where you are at. You're going to pair that with a forward folding, which is a Jefferson curl. So most people probably don't have a plyo box in their house, that's fine. Uh, you can literally use your sofa or a chair. It's just something to stand on. Obviously, if you are still working on touching your toes, you probably don't need to stand on anything at all. Um, but I will explain this one first, because it's the easy one. So you've got your thing you're standing on. You've also got something heavy to pull you down. So standing on the box, I'm gonna stand right on the edge with my feet together. You're going to try to roll and articulate down your spine. So I'm trying to keep my bum tucked under until the very last minute. So up here, I'll have to start sticking my butt out again, but I'm reaching my max forward folding flexibility. The weight is actually here to help pull me down a bit further. So obviously the heavier the weight, the further it's gonna pull me down, but remember you have to be able to pull it back up to the top. Okay, Gary's trying it out with a cam light. <laughs> Can you touch your toes? Yeah, palms on the ground. There we go, it's pretty good. Pretty good for cold. You deserved your banana, Gary. You've earned it. I will eat it. So that is our counter stretching exercise that we're going to do after our back bending. Um, again, you pick how much weight uh, you want to do. You even don't have to do weight. You can literally just work on actively reaching down. Uh, is also fine. So the back bend that we are going to work on is trying to go from a squat position. So your Asian squat, because mine's so great, uh, going through into a bridge and then coming back out the other side. So end goal, go forward a bit. End goal is to place the hand down, keep the feet flat on the ground, lift the hips up, coming over, through and back, okay? I understand not everyone can do that, which is fine. Uh, the next variation to that is same steps, so placing the hand, losing my mic, placing the hand on the ground, lifting the hips up, going as high as you can, and work on turning that hand on the ground. So you're trying to turn it so that the fingers are facing your toes to get that other hand down. So you're just going as far as you can, and then you're gonna come back out the same side. So right hand comes down, sorry, left hand comes down, arching, and then coming back. You're working on getting that hand rotation. You are rotating from your palm. Most of the weight is in my feet, so you should be able to get that turn. Uh, it does require a bit of shoulder mobility as well, so that also might be something that is stopping you currently. Or oh, can we get it back on? Yes, kind of. Yes, all right. Um, the third variation, which will be the easiest one, is working on that initial arch. So from your squat position, being able to place the hand on the ground and then getting as much of this extension as possible. So arching and then coming back out, okay? Um, you go as far as you feel comfortable. Again, try to use as much of your upper body uh, flexibility. So I'm working on squeezing my thoracic so that I don't have to rely on my lower back so much because you don't want to have any sort of hinging in your back. We want to get a nice, even, 
bend with our spine. And if your hip flexors are nice and loose, you can also use those quite a lot, which is why we warm them up at the start. Warm ups. Okay, so again, going all the way over is your variation one, which is the hardest one. Your second variation is working on turning that hand, which is, I don't know is what some of you are working on. And then the third one is literally just going here and coming back, okay? We are going to do five on each side. So that is 10 in total. Once we've done that, we are then gonna go to the box and do a counter stretch and work on our forward folding, okay? We're gonna try and get three sets of this in, okay? Uh, any questions or if anything feels a little bit gnarly, feel free to ask me in the comments. I will try and answer them as best as I can. Let's begin. Is hands against the wall okay? Yeah, that's actually a really good um, variation and I'll try and show you that if I can. So for anyone who, oh, you can kind of see, anyone who's really struggling with the hands on the ground, uh, like Kat suggested, you can actually do it on the wall. So when you're doing it on the wall, you can place the hand back behind you and then you're still trying to rotate. As you rotate, other hand goes over and you rotate back and you can do the exact same thing. So that is another variation if you want to really work on that twist in the wrist. So it just takes a lot of the load off on your arms, okay? Um, let's go. So I'm gonna start on my left side. Hand comes down, and one. And back. Two. Back. Three. Four. Five, And last one, 10. Okay. Counter stretching. So going over to your Jefferson curl station, grabbing the weight or whatever you're holding on to. Try and keep the knees nice and straight. And we're going chin to chest, round the shoulders and try and roll all the way down. So it should feel nice. And coming all the way back. And two. So try and take deep breaths as well, just to get your breath back. Three. Four, five, six. Seven, and eight, go 
Okay, a two more. Nine. And one more time, 10. And coming up. All right, grab a quick drink. We've got two more sets left. So again, if you have any questions about the back bending one, feel free to ask. Let's begin. Okay. One. Hips up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And back. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, Eight. Remember, shift your knees over your ankles. You got two more. Nine. Last one. Ten. And back. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, Jefferson Curl. So that should actually burn your quads because most of that weight was going through my legs, which is what you want. Just makes it a lot easier. Okay. Standing up nice and tall. And coming forward, one. And back up. Going round the back. Two. And up, three, and up, four, and up, five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more to go, nine. Okay, last one, 10. And coming back up. Alrighty, one more set. You can grab a drink. Are you ready for some back bends? Okay. Last one. Uh, and if anyone has been able to make it over who hasn't before, do send us the videos or at least film it. 
Okay. And one. Yeah, that'd be good to see. We like success stories. Success stories or just generally doing some good stuff in your house for the stream? Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And last one, 10. And out, okay. One more time with the Jefferson curl. So standing up nice and tall, feet together, knees are straight the whole time. And one. And up, make sure your quads are squeezing. Two. And up. Three. And up. Four. So from here to here should be a nice back stretch. Unless you've got really tight hamstrings, in which case you'll feel it in your legs too, which is great. Seven. And eight. Two more to go, nine. And last one, 10. And coming up. Okay, the very last thing we're gonna work on is a bit of conditioning. We're gonna work on a cobra. There are a couple of variations of this. So if you have access to like a table leg or even a pole or something you can wrap a band around, even if you have a friend who can hold on to the other end will do the trick. But I wanna wrap the band around the pole like so to be around hip height the higher the band is the more assistance it's going to give you you don't want to have it by your knees because it's not going to help you at all if you do not have a band or something you can wrap around you can do this without I'll show you the different variation but let's clear this Uh, you're going to want a mat for this one as well, regardless of what variation you're doing. Because it does hurt your hips on the ground. We're going to work on a cobra. So if you have a band, you are going to grab hold of it. So that your hands are about shoulder width apart. And I want you to externally rotate so that your thumbs are gonna point up to the ceiling rather than down like that, okay? So I just rest it on my pinkies usually so I don't actually have to hold onto it. You're gonna come forward. So obviously the thicker or stretchier the band is, the more it's gonna help you as well. Arms nice and straight in front of you. 
A bit of strata with the legs will also help you and make sure your butt is squeezing the whole time. You're going to lift up through your chest and your arms first. So my belly button is on the ground. You're then gonna try to articulate as much as you can all the way to the top of your range, wherever that is, and then come all the way down, reversing the steps, okay? Uh, you don't wanna have the band pull you up too much. That was probably too much help for me because then you lose the idea of the exercise. That band is there just to assist you. It's a little bit of a spot. You should be working yourself to try and get up and get back down. If you do not have access to a band, you are going to do the same thing, but you're gonna have your hands next to your shoulders. Again, a bit of a straddle. Glutes. Up. So look up to the ceiling, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and try to use as minimal support from your hands as possible. Go all the way to the top of your range, holding at the top, and then slowly work your way back down, okay? If you are feeling pain, pressure, uncomfortableness through your lower back, then you can just keep your belly button on the ground and work more through your thoracic. So you're just gonna work through that range there and then come back down, okay? So again, I'm just gonna lift up there, but I'm trying to round as much as possible and not just hinge from one spot in my spine. Okay, we're gonna do six. They're gonna be nice and slow. So ideally you've got about three, four seconds lifting up to the top and then three or four seconds coming back down to the bottom. Okay, so picking whatever variation you're doing. All right, so start. through your back, all the way to the top, and slowly coming back down. And two. Holding, and down. Three. And down. Four. And down. Five. And down and one more time. Six. and coming down. Okay, counter stretch for this one is going to be a forward folding version of a rotation exercise. So rather than lying on your stomach like you did for your scorpion, you're gonna lie on your back. You're gonna take one leg and it's gonna come over and across. You can totally see what I'm doing, like that, okay? Uh, and then from there, I'm going to imagine someone is wringing me out like a towel. So this leg is gonna reach away from me. This arm is gonna reach in the opposite direction. So someone is pulling my right arm and someone is pulling my left, uh, right leg the other direction. So you're gonna squeeze, try and get both shoulders on the ground. You can also lift this foot up and then you're gonna relax, okay? And we're gonna do five of those. I'll go this way so you can see a bit better. Or not, okay. And one, reaching and relax. Two, and relax. Three, and relax. Four, and relax, and one more time on this side, five, 
and relax. Okay, change sides. Coming over and reaching one and relax. Two. And relax. Three. And relax. Four. And relax one more time. Five. And relax. Okay. We're going back to our first exercise. So back to your cobra. I'm going to do two more rounds of this. So grabbing hold, shoulder width apart. Externally rotated arms. Straddle with the legs. And one. Lifting up. And down. Two. And down, three, and down, four, and down, five, and down. Last one, six, and coming down. Okay, into your rotation. Leg comes up, comes over. And reaching the foot to the hand, reaching the hand, the other hand in the other direction, and relax. Two. And relax. Three. Relax. Four. Relax. And last one, five. And relax. Okay, other side. Take it over, and one. Relax. Two. Relax. Three. Relax. Four. Relax, and last one, five. And relax, okay. We've got one more set. Going back to your Cobra. Okay. And one. Holding at the top. Slowly back down. Two. And down. Three. And down. Four. And down. Five. And down, last one. Six. And down. Okay. One more set of rotation and then you guys are done. All right, lying on your back. Foot comes up, comes over. Again, try and keep both shoulders on the ground as best as you can. And reaching one. And relax. Two. Relax, 
three. Relax, four. Relax, and one more time on the side, five. And relax, other leg. All right, and one. And relax, two. Relax, three. Relax, two more, four. Relax, and last one, five. And relax, okay. You guys are finished for the day. Thank you for watching and joining in with the exercises. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, we do have our Patreon set up. Gary's gonna put the link in the comments uh, or if you're watching on YouTube, the link will be down below in the description. Uh, it just helps support the coaches and helps keep the live stream running and keeps it free as well. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you can help us out. Um, yeah, and like I said before, if you have been working on going from a squat to a bridge uh, and you managed to get it or get close or need any sort of tips, feel free to send through videos and we'll like to watch them. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. I don't know if Gary has anything else to input. Yeah, send in videos. We like to watch you in your own home, so that'd be great. I think Dex has loved today's lesson. Dex is out. Are you out? Are you going to say bye? No. Oh, Sean's uh, demanding a couple of car, car stretches, stretches, please. please. Oh, there's so many, Sean. So many. Um, my favorite and the most successful for me anyway, and you've done this before, is the good old wooshy bounce. Um, you can do it up on the box or you can do it against a, a wall. If you have a block, we totally have blocks. If you have a yoga block, you can do it that way. Um, but I like to do it against something. You want to try to square your hips. So if I'm using my left leg, I'm trying to suck that left leg right back into my hip socket. You're going to come all the way down, grab hold of that foot, and then you're trying to pull that foot as close as you can to your head, and you're literally doing little bounces. And I would do around 25 to 50 bounces on each leg, um, increasing to 100. Uh, if you are nowhere near, because you want to get your toe to your forehead is the goal. Um, if you're nowhere near that, I do encourage setting little targets. So even if your first target is to get your elbow to your toe, uh, you can even get your uh, fist or like that. So you get creative with the target, but having something to actually have in contact with every time you bounce just keeps you in check. Okay, and then the other one, which you've done with Matt, is this one. So if you have like a pole or something, wedging your foot right up against the pole and then trying to push your hip forward into the pole. So you're going that way, forward like that, rather than like that, we'll also get it. Okay? Yeah, you've done this before. Let me know how you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, thanks everyone See for joining in. See you guys next time. And yeah, we'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks.